Mr. Gatekeeper here. We're doing uh, this one a little different. I'm over here at the bench at the moment. Uh, what I call a bench. This little table in the middle of the ground. <laughs> hey, we, we just about got things ready to start rolling good in the, uh, the, uh, the shop out back. So y'all can start seeing some better looking videos. Anyway. Uh, got a Palomar Elite 500. I hadn't started on this yet. Just want to make a pre video. Um, sir, I don't know. Um, pretty much in every corner of the amp, the fins were bent pretty badly. Bent down. Uh, sometimes, sometimes two or three of them. I don't know if that was done during shipment or not. This is a heavy unit. Or if it was already that way, but I went ahead and bent them all back as good as I could, just to let you know. And uh, I was going to go ahead and hook this up to see if we're getting any output on the power supply. So it's got an uh, internal regulated supply that you can use uh, stationary independently. But uh, I hear some things floating around inside, so uh, I don't think we're going to turn it on. So uh, we'll be back. I got uh, one of these exact units in the house in three pieces, uh, four, three or four pieces, that a real good buddy of mine gave to me before he passed away. The guy that helped me a lot when I was coming up to get to where I'm at now. And uh, so I'm pretty excited to work on this unit. I think right after I do this, I'm going to pull that one out when I get a chance and work on it. I always told them I wanted to get it working. Uh, make them proud. <laughs> well, hopefully he'll be proud wherever he's, he's watching down on me, man. <laughs> Mr. Coon Dog. Got to give a shout out to him. Local, local fella, man. Silent Key out here in northeast Georgia. All right, we'll be back. Alrighty, here we go. We got it all apart here. It's like a seashell kind of. Got four parts to it. But, uh, playing a few things that I see just right off the bat. Uh, Mr. Terry, I don't know if you uh, noticed this though. But these uh, power switch and preamp switch, or they are uh, they are a lamp enabled switches so they're made to light up the two wires that are hooked up to them right here they were on the hot side right here and um, as you see I've colored them black because these are actually grounds man these are the grounds for the lamps or LEDs I don't know if it's an LED or a lamp but there's those are the grounds for that and uh, probably what I'll end up doing is a uh, solder probably solder both of these wires to the uh, ground part of this switch because this might be a little bit too much counting everything else that has to go on this terminal so that's what I'll probably end up doing with that but uh, yeah so that that's one thing I noticed right there there's the top right there Let's put that right there Alrighty, the very first thing I noticed, which was jingling around in the box that I heard, here's your sandbar resistor for your biasing. <laughs> it's definitely seen some better days, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's, uh, it's fried, man. Ah, uh, I missed. <laughs> Let's try it again. It's hard to do while you're looking at the camera. Well, anyway, so I got you a brand new sandbar we're going to throw in there. And um, I don't know exactly what happened, but if you look here, it completely fried this trace, man. This trace right here, which is uh, carrying your bias voltage to the base of your transistors, 
there's supposed to be a strip here that goes all the way down and that's another thing I see that's very weird I have no idea what this wire here is for <laughs> I mean I, I've you know I've got the schematics here man you know I've got the dang schematics here straight from Palomar you know uh, and also like I said I got another identical amp in the house that I can use for reference and I've already went and looked at that as well I have no idea why this is here <laughs> I don't know somebody put this here this is not factory I don't know what they were trying to do um, I don't know if you put this here uh, Terry I don't know but I will be taking this off but I'm about to solder this they've even soldered a lead down here it's weird man but uh basically what I'm gonna be doing is see this little slit right here that's because one side of the and you can see where the sandbar was soldered right here one side of the sandbar is supposed to be right here the other side soldered past this slit anywhere right here so we're going to solder the sandbar there and uh, I'm probably just going to leave this wire intact right here or redo it I don't know I haven't made my mind I might take it off put some Teflon on there that's one thing I wish they would do with these amps man they're, they're doing it to save money but none of these wires are Teflon none of them so if heat gets to them you know it's going to melt the wires I wish they would just put Teflon in them when they're supposed to but they keep the Teflon for close to the circuit things you know wrapping the transformers and com splitters and combiners but anyway so I'll probably I don't know man I don't like this right here it this was bent over to the ground it was sitting on the ground I think I'm just going to unsolder this and run me a Teflon jumper from here all the way to here I'm gonna go ahead and just take this up right here man this this is just non trustworthy <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and take that up and run it from there to here so you can have that factory biasing back there I mean you didn't ask me to do any C biasing to this thing so I'm gonna keep it factory another thing I noticed is there was a lot of leads that was smashed onto the board for example this hundred peak affair cap right here man was smashed I'm talking about flat to the board uh, this was touching uh, there it was just smashed I had to straighten it out a little bit and get it back up your uh, Kian general purpose Kian transistor was smashed like literally smashed <laughs> So I'm about to be replacing that. Uh, this transistor right here was smashed to the board. I got it straightened out. There were some other leads too that was smashed to the board. Uh, these resistors were flat to the board. Probably going to take these off right here just in case. Replace them with some good 5 watts. Um, so anyway, on over to the power supply section. I do not know why, but there is a screw missing from here. I do not know why. I'm hoping to God this transistor is good. I don't know why a screw would be took out of there. It just boggles my mind. Uh, but I'm going to put a screw back in there and find me an uh, insulator. Put that back in there. If there's anything wrong with this uh, regulator, I got some LM23s. I can just pull out that socket, throw another one in. But, uh, I want to replace and fix everything that I can see that's evident to my eyes and then what we're going to do instead of going to the trouble of hooking, hooking this thing back up uh, you know putting it all back together I'm going to test these uh, sections individually meaning I'm going to hook an external power supply to this section first make sure this is going good another thing I notice there's this wire looks very loose. This is your output coax feeding to the SO239 on the output. I mean, it, these wires will get moved around and just break off, you know. And a lot of times if you have Teflon, they won't break off as easy. But I'm going to take this off probably and throw a uh, RG316 jumper like it's on this one. 
okay as you can tell that's what's supposed to be there because this is where the ground of it was soldered originally right here all right man so i'm gonna do all that i might even solder these connections right here too man i don't like that i do not like that that's your main power man um feeding the amp on the output of the transformer after it's regulated i don't like that man i like to have soldered connections man everywhere possible so i'm probably going to at least solder those two there man you know what i mean it's just make me feel a lot better so uh i don't know i might grab me a a single fuse we'll see so i'm gonna do all that man we'll be back uh and then i'll test this individually I'm going to be doing a little mod with mine. And I'm going to be putting a variable on the front of mine where I can actually adjust my voltage. On my uh, power supply would be pretty neat. And I don't know the, uh, how we're going to have to change this potentiometer right here. But uh, anyway, we'll be back. We'll get this back up and running for you. Well, all righty. about maybe a day and a half two days later uh, I'd probably guesstimate maybe about seven to eight hours I don't know maybe eight seven to ten I, I, I don't keep up with it but somewhere around six to ten hours of labor later <laughs> here is the power supply section Mr. Terry, Whew. like I said, uh, one reason I was kind of excited about taking on this project is because I have one too. <laughs> There's your amp section right there, four 455s. There's mine. So thought you know maybe I'd learn something with yours it would help me with mine once I got around to mine and guess what buddy I did I did I sure did my friend I'm a fair man I'm an honest man I shoot straight I don't care what anybody has to say man in the end somebody's going to appreciate you just telling the truth it don't matter if it makes you look bad it don't matter if it makes you look less experienced it don't matter man i don't care this is a hobby man shoot man in my eyes i'm nowhere near as good as them other cotton pickers out there mr one two three badass box builder mr uh stick man badass box builder mr um oh you, you damn sure can't remember mr tech nine that's one of my personal favorites. I have high respect for Tech Nine. Awesome, awesome box builder. I need to give that fella a call. Shout out to you, Mr. Tech Nine, if you're watching this. I still ain't even talked to you, brother. We'll get around to it, though. But anyway, the problem we were sitting at with this, I'll try to hurry up so it won't take up a lot of time here, is. Um, we had 120 volts going into it. We had about 17 volts after the rectification before being filtered. Then we had about 22 volts after being filtered before regulation. After regulation, I was getting like a milliwatt, a, a millivolt, or just about n n n enough not to register. But it, I mean, it was registering like a millivolt, something like that. So I was like, man, I guess one of these pass transistors are bad or something. I, so I, I unsoldered every single one of these legs. Even modified the board a little bit so if anybody ever needs to uh, flip these legs up again, it would be a lot easier. Because uh, it, it, was, it was pretty uh, tough on me because it was soldered all the way up to the very, I mean, to the, to the transistor itself. So when you flipped it up, it still wasn't enough because it was still soldered there. So I kind of modified the board to where it'd be easier to flip it up. I'm, I'm gonna uh, probably do that on mine too if I get a chance. But um, I, I flipped up all these, man. I took this whole board out. I checked the bottom. 
I noticed that one of the leads on one of the, on this cap right here, when I pulled it out, it was scraping the bottom of the heat sink. And uh, I took it out, I checked it. I took this one out and checked it. I took this one out and checked it. I just left that one in because, I mean, all those check good, so that one's good too. If you ask me, they got, they got way overkill. I mean, this box could run with just one of these, man. But hell, man, well, overkill's good. There's a 47,000, three of them. And then that's a 10,000 on the regulation output. So, uh, you know, and I resoldered them. I dremeled the bottom to make sure none of it was going to be scraping the board. And I still was getting a millivolt. And another thing I'd done was I replaced this uh, transistor right here. I think it's a tip 31, I believe. And I even replaced the regulator because, you know, you send a socket. So I put a new regulator in there, LM723. Still, 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 still. I'm like, what in the hell, man? <laughs> so I went ahead, and that was about, what, five and a half hours of labor last night doing all that. This morning, I go ahead and hook it up to this. And this is my regulating section of my uh, Palomar 500 Elite. And uh, I cleaned this up real good because it was, I mean, whew, very dirty. I can show you the other one over there. It's It's been sitting for a long time. So I cleaned it up just in case I needed to. It was kind of pro part of the whole process of using this as a process of elimination, because I knew that this section was good. Because I know what the I know where the section lies, the problem lies in mine. So I hook it up, and guess what, man? Same thing, like a milli uh, bolt. So I'm sitting here looking, man, and then something hits me. I'm like, what is this relay doing in here? I, I mean, I kept kind of asking myself. They're using that relay for the re the reset of some sort. I said, well, what if that needs to be reset? <laughs> when I thought about that, I was like, gatekeeper, you gonna, I'm going to punch yourself, which is myself, in the face, if that's all it was. Guess what, brother? That's all it was. But let me tell you this. I, I went ahead and did a little research after this. These units are notorious for having to be resetted, pressing the reset button every time you turn the amp on. What it does is when you turn the amp, when you turn the amp on, uh, excuse me, when you turn the amp off, this relay disengages. Uh, and I think that's hooking the ground up to the voltage regulator. If I'm correct, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It could be a a, a, a positive to the sensing uh, one of the sensors uh, sensors of it. I, I, but I think it's the ground, if I remember correctly. Okay, and then once you just simply connect these two together, it sends some positive unregulated voltage to the re, uh, to, to to and turns this relay on, and then it and then it, it keeps the connection here. Well, so far, every time that I've unplugged this, I've had to do it on here. And what I was reading from, I think, Mr. CB Radio Magazine dot com was that he, his and one of his buddies were the same way. They had to press that reset button every single time they turned the unit off and back on, which, you know, it ain't that big of an issue. But when I got it up and going, guess what, man? It was sitting at 19 volts. There's your sign. There's where your problem lies. That's why this amp is here right now, Mr. Terry. The guy that had it before you. And guess what? I've checked this and it's the same thing. <laughs> Check this out. The guy that had it before you thought he would be smart. Because this right here is nothing but a potentiometer, pretty much. I could I could extend this to an to an external potentiometer on the front of your amp to where you can exact to where you can actually adjust your voltage up and down where you want it you could set it up at 15 volts 16 volts and run it this is a good strong regulation circuit i really like it real good and strong it's got the balancing resistors right here everything's good to go with it so the guy that had it before you brother he got in here and turn this potentiometer all the way up, man. And guess where it was sitting at? 19 volts. 19 volts. 
real lucky those pills didn't get blown. The biasing circuit. That's why the biasing circuit popped. That's why this trace on this biasing circuit popped. Because that biasing circuit is designed for 13.8, 14 volts. 15 at the most. Because it runs off the same principle as the one, the, the way I bias. So that's why that popped. And the trace up under the bottom it probably had something to do with that too. He, he volted it. 19 volts probably didn't even know that. He probably just stuck a screwdriver and turned it up without even looking at the volts. Same thing happened to mine. But unluckily, my, so my pills blew. <laughs> so, I hope people can use this video and understand if you ever get one of these units, there's nothing wrong with getting in here and turning this voltage up a little bit. But the problem about that is, is this is an AB1 biased amplifier. The biasing circuit is only designed for around like 12.8 to 15 volts to stay in its stable range. Once you go up above that, you're, you're, you're in trouble, man, because uh, you will blow that biasing circuit. Now, if you get in here and you C-class this amp, if you C-class this amp or do something real neat and put a switch where you can switch back and forth, from the AB, which is not a problem. I, I, I could do this to this unit very easily. Then you could switch over to the class C and then volt it up to about 15, 16 and a half, whatever you want then. Be very careful. Use this as a as a as a teacher, I guess, you know. So I went ahead and adjusted that potentiometer and I'm gonna leave it right here. I think that's good. It's um, it, it took a little bit to get it right here, man. You move it a little bit, it jumps up to you know 14 and a half. I think this is good operating range. Uh, it's pretty much uh, going to show 14 volts on some, 13.9 on, on others. I think that's good to go, man. You can still run your radios on this voltage, 13.9, 14 volts. Even some vehicles get up to 14 and a half volts. So you still can run your radio on this, so it's good to go, man. Good to go. So we're going to get everything put back together and do a final video and a final test. I feel safe now hooking everything back up and putting it together. Now I've tested the amp section by itself. It's going very well. I've went ahead and installed the new, resi the new resistors for your high and low. I mean for your uh, medium and low. You got the 180 right there, went up a little bit on there. And got a uh, 27 went down a little bit on there okay so I've got all that done and uh, we're ready to hook back up man see there's the reset button right there see hey man you better be glad your front looks that good mine is rough I'm gonna have to I'm, I'm gonna actually gonna turn my front around like this right here uh, maybe I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's aluminum, so uh, I'll figure out something. Probably just clean it real good, and I'm gonna put me a variable on mine, and then a variable for the rec uh, voltage regulating section. Then I'm a AB class C. I'm gonna have it. I'm gonna have it where you can switch it to C. Uh, probably I don't know. Probably keep it. It was a buddy of mine that passed away, so I know he'd be proud of it. But well, there you go. Finally got here at the end, man. I'm glad to get this thing off the bench, brother, because I am swamped over here. Swamped. All right, brother. We'll be back with the output test. And I'll be hooking the radio up to the front of it as well just to test everything, all aspects of it, Mr. Gatekeeper. I'll get back with you. All righty, here we go. Got everything put back together. Big old, I call it a big old seashell. <laughs> the only thing we got left is the top, which uh, I'll clean that up a little bit for you, Terry. We'll put that on. I'll put that on very last when I'm done. We're still getting the regulated 13.92 volts right there where I set it. I really do love the idea of this amplifier. I'm surprised that a lot of other companies didn't do the same thing of making a little bass amp where somebody can hook their radio up to the front of it or 
use the uh, power supply in it in independently. It's supposed it's supposed to be a 50 amp supply in here, but I am I am going to agree with the bit being a 50 amp supply. Everything on the board says 35 because of the Palomar Elite. I think it's a 250 maybe or the one with just two 1446s or two 455s. It is a 35 amp in that. And this is um, the only other thing I noticed that fan right there is 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 sucking instead of blowing. But that's what they choose to do factory. If this was my unit, or shall I say, what I will be doing with my unit is I will probably put a fan on each side of the heat sink right here to get some fan blowing on the heat sink. One side for the regulation, one for the amp, or if you want to, just kind of fill the regulation side. If it does not get, if it doesn't get hot, but the amp side does get pretty warm when you're using it, just put you a fan on the left side. Put you two of them on there if you want to. That's a big heat sink. Then you can run some wire. Drill. You can drill a little hole in the back. Run some wires for the regulated part of the supply there. All right, we're gonna take it over to the bench and hook it up and hope for the best. All righty, Mr. Gatekeeper's done. Uh, Lit up my celebration cigarette. Mr. Marlboro Menthol here. <laughs> I know I'm the only crazy joker. It's always letting everybody know it's uh, my, my chain smoking cigarette smoke and not the equipment that I'm working on smoking. <laughs> That's unperfect. Hey, man. I ain't looking at no professionalism here, man. This is a hobby. Something I love doing. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just being myself. I ain't trying to act like somebody I'm not. I smoke like a dang freight train when I'm working on stuff. That's just how, how I am. If I ain't working on something, I ain't smoking that much. That's just the way I am. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just glad to be uh, done with this project so I can get on to the... Next 10 or 15 we got laying around here. <clears throat> Alright, we got it on the uh, test bench right here. Got it all hooked up. I'm going to go ahead and do an output test now. It's uh, working very well. Very well. I'm easily seeing the 500 watts it says it can do. PEP. As you see, we got it regulated at right there about 13.9. So you can still run your radio on the on the front ports here if you wish. And uh, also I want to show you what I'm talking about with this unit. The second that you turn this power supply on, just like that right there, you see that fan's not on in the back. So there, we, don't, we don't get no power. See? No power. You got to press that reset button. You got to press that reset button. So I'm going to press it now. Now look at that. There goes the fan. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if these were made this way. I really don't know. Um, there's a relay in there, kind of like an internal breaker. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's supposed to get a little uh, a voltage I don't know if there's supposed to leave a little voltage to where you don't have to do that every time. I really don't know. If you ask me, it should have put right here a uh, push start or something. I don't <laughs> But I just noticed my personal one does it. And I've taught, uh, uh, like I said, I read that thing of CB, uh, I think CBmagazine.com. And he said his done it and one of his other buddies was the same way. So I don't know. Maybe, Maybe they're built that way, or maybe they just all go bad to where they have to be done that way. Not a big deal. You turn it on, you get to press that button to get everything rolling on. Okay. Well, before uh, I click the power on button over here, we're going to go ahead and just let you see, like I always do, how much we're going to be putting into it. Stock cover 29. Bluetooth. Limiter still in there. Done about four bird watts on the bird. About 20 or so peak.
Alrighty, right here about 21 watts this lovely night. Get this thing put back together just fine. Alrighty, here we go. By the way, I just tested the preamp. <clears throat> uh, preamp works fine. Um, I can't tell you exactly how many dB increase it's giving you because nobody's on the air right now. But uh, now, you know, I did see the uh, the static increase and the uh, needle move forward about I don't know two or three S units. It looked like so. It's a fine indication that the preamp's working just fine. And I'll be quite honest with you, if it wasn't, brother, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'd take this box back apart. I think I'd probably say, "Hey, man, you, you mind that the preamp just don't work?" <laughs> I'm just kidding with you, but hell, I'd take this thing, I'd take this side and drop it over and see if I can't get it working for you. But it's working, so we're good to go. All right, as you see, we got a high low medium switch right here. Got a focus, so we're gonna put it on low. Here we go. Do All right, we got about 300 on low. Do Real good on the input. 10 watt reflect. 100 is 10, 40 is 4, 2 is 1, uh, 2, in between that's 1. Ta, 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 ta. All right, we got about three, 300 or so on low. Let's go over to high. Uh, excuse me, medium. I'm ready to get in the bed, y'all. <laughs> All righty, sitting there about 420 to 450. 420 to 450. All right, let's go ahead and crank her on up. Here, I'll let you see the dead key, too. This is a four transistor amp, so, you know, it can handle a little bit higher a dead key than a a two or something like that this is what it's producing with a one watt dead key from the radio fifteen watts fifteen watts alrighty here we go there's your 520 watts, brother. It looks good on the input there. All righty. 520 watts. Four bird watts going into it. Hit it with a little bit stronger radio, man. You should be able to get this thing up to 6, 650 PEP. No problem, man. Um, it's on, uh, like I said, it's uh, regulated about 13.9. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, the regulation will probably float a little bit um, with this particular unit. You might see it increase up to maybe 14.2, 14.3 maybe. It, it, it's not as stable as like a Pyramid or an Astron would be. I mean, it's a Palomar regulated, you know, power supply section. It ain't like it's... You know, got all the, uh, you know, it's built well, but it's not built to be, you know, perfectly stable where you can pull 35 amps and it's still at 13.9 or nothing like that. But, you know, it stays pretty good, pretty good and stable. Uh, you're, you're, you're completely safe for running your radio on it with the amp as well. So that's, you know, that's a big plus. You don't have to worry about using an external, um, piece there and actually you know I might just go ahead and hook me up a radio real quick to show that to y'all um should have thought about this beforehand shouldn't I <laughs> let's 
see here, man. Uh, ooh, yeah, let's hook that up. I'll be right back. We're gonna grab one of my radios I got laying around here. One of my uh, probably grab that little striker right there. Might hook it up real quick. It needs some work done to it. It ain't doing the watts it's supposed to do, but it'd still be uh, pretty neat to hook it up. So we'll be back, and that'll be the last section of it. Palomari Elite 500 repaired. I wouldn't be doing this without God, my friends, because I wouldn't be here. I'm sure a lot of y'all fellas out there can agree with me. The craziest crap I done been through growing up and stuff. I wouldn't be here... Without the big man, Mr. Gatekeeper, set it out here in northeast Georgia. One more section and we'll be done. Alrighty, here we go. I got my uh, Striker 440 HP hooked up to the Palomar Elite. And you see, you can follow the wire. right there all right flip on the power supply press the reset waboom that's a beautiful radio I'm a big blue LED fan Oh, two, 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 two. Oh, two, 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 two. Like I said, this particular radio needs some work. Should be doing a lot more than that, but uh, <clears throat> just wanted to hook this up to show you. All right, next I want to show you if I can do this with two hands. Voltmeter. I'm just going to stick these in the terminals here so you can take a look at the voltage. So we got 13.92. Okay. Let's see if I can't. Let's see if I can't. Okay. I'm going to key the radio. Just let y'all see how stable it stays. I dropped the lead. So it doesn't move at all, man. Works absolutely perfect doing what it should do. I'd have to move around a lot of jumpers to, uh, well, I wouldn't hook this radio into this anyway. It'd probably blow the hell out of it. I had to do a lot of change around the jumpers to hook my bench radio up to this unit itself. So I just want to kind of just let show y'all that the radio works on the uh, unit just fine. Just to let you just to let you see that, Mr. Terry. All right, we have came to an end. Let me go get these five, six uh, videos edited together, and uh, we'll be on to the next. I think I'm going to be Class C in a 667, which I said I would never do. I would never disgrace a Texas store that way, but it uh, looks like I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Y'all have a good one, Mr. Gatekeeper. Hey, we're just taking one day to the next. Taking everything as it comes. And y'all know how I say it. I am not trying to climb my way up to the top and be the best. Hey, I'm just trying to hang with the rest. And the rest, you know who you are. Big shout out to Danny123, Mr. Stickman over at No Name Amps, Mr. Uh, Louie over there at Borderland Amps, 
my boy Mr. Real, 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 real deal. Getting his AC on out there in the hog yard. My personal homeboy. And Mr. Tech Nine doing his thing the old school creative way. And then many more, but we won't name them all because we'll be here all day. Oh, I just rhymed. Let me get on out of here, gatekeepers. Clear.